What's up folks, it's Parallax Abstraction and welcome to another Indie Showcase. This is uh, one that I've actually been meaning to cover for quite some time. I kind of feel bad about this, but real life really got in the way this year. I was given a code for this back in March actually, and uh, this is a very interesting little indie game with some hardcore retro roots in it, which is why I'm very interested in it. So this is Pilots of, it's either Darsalon or Darsalon, I'm not sure. Comes to us from a tiny little dev called Dr. Cucho Games, who's actually working on another game in this series called The Moons of Darsalon that's actually coming out uh, later this year as I'm recording this. Late 2020 is what they're aiming for. And this is a game very much inspired by some old school uh, physics platformers that you saw back in the early home computer era. This game indeed says that it has a Commodore 64 style color palette and musical inspiration, which is very, very, very true. It's quite interesting, but it is brutal. And uh, I'm going to show you guys some of that here. So the reason I'm in the options menu here is this game really does have some uh, fondness for its retro roots. Like look at all the CRT filter options you have on this thing. You can even have it, you know, curve the edges of the screen like you're looking at an old school CRT monitor. I love that. It has some weird quirks in that, um, well, every time I restart the game, it resets to this 1920 by 1200 resolution. 1920 by 1080 is as high as it will go, even though it was made in the Unity engine. You can adjust the zooming on the pixels if you want to, to have it sort of fill the screen a little bit more. Um, but as you can see, it sort of changes the appearance a fair bit. Multiple difficulty levels as well, I like these. So there's narrative, grandmother, People who complain about difficulty even more, people who complain about difficulty, challenging and fun, and no checkpoints. This is the one I've been messing around on. The game also has an in-game GIF maker, which is kind of cool. GIF, GIF, whatever. I actually like to say GIF, but I always get slammed for that, so whatever. Um, one thing that's kind of a bummer is that this game does boast controller support, and it used to work for me using my Xbox One controller. It doesn't anymore. It just refuses to detect it now. I don't know if that's due to an update or something that's changed on my end. I don't know. But this game actually does play pretty well with the keyboard. So that's what I'm going to be using for this. Um, and there, there are online leaderboards as well that your sort of total score gets phoned into. So I'm going to start a new game here to show you guys what this is like. But as you can see... It even tells you to use the controller, but yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, you can see here, yeah, very much looks a bit old school, right? This this looks, has a Commodore 64 inspired color palette, but definitely I would say more of an Amiga, Atari ST, uh, maybe even 32-bit console style flair to it. But, so the idea here is this is very physics based. It's in thrust retrust is the motto of this game, which is very, very true. So, you control your ship via inertia and momentum by turning it and using thrust and using the residual inertia from that. So you will have to kill things once in a while with that totally not Star Wars sounding laser shot. Yeah. <laughs> You'll also see there, uh, well, kind of in the bottom left, if my stupid head wasn't in the way, uh, you have ship fuel and cargo meters. So ship is literally the hull strength of your ship. Fuel is how much fuel you have, and cargo, well, we'll get to that part in a minute here. But you have to make sure that you don't run out of any of them. So if you find fuel tanks like that, you have to get over them and press, well, in my case, the down arrow, and that will pull up some of the fuel from it. You got to make sure you don't bounce off the walls too much because you'll hurt your ship. And when you pick up your cargo, you have to carry it to its destination without damaging it too much, and also drop it uh, down without damaging it too much. And this is only the first level. The later levels in this get absolutely vicious in terms of some of what you have to do. And you're also on the clock as well. All of this stuff contributes to your score. So you see here it's telling me I gotta pick up this thing. You can also, um, if you're not near anything to pick up, you can turn on a shield, which is good for helping you if you bounce off walls or, you know, are getting shot at or things like that. And it's unlimited. But obviously the more thrust you use in order to stay in the air, the more uh, fuel you're gonna burn up. So you gotta drop the thing there. Drop it on the platform, level over. And you'll see here, you get bonus points. Total bonus leet, nice. So 5740 is my total high score uh, for the leaderboard. Uh, so I've gotten um, a, you know, a fair bit more um, uh, score in the, in the past. Not necessarily on this level, just on this, this chapter or section, if you will. So, and then it starts you to the next level. Now, 
Where this will get tricky later on is not only because of the amount of enemies, not only because of the environmental complexity, the game will often not tell you uh, where you have to go in some cases, so you have to figure out your way around and do that without running yourself out of fuel. There's some sections where you have to do like some pl uh, puzzling using uh, things like conveyor belts and that in order to be able to actually get your cargo like this out of the level and to the drop point. It get and where you have to haul it through a lot of different environments where, without damaging it. Like you can see here. Oh God. Well, <laughs> screwed that up. Um, everything in this game is very, very fragile. Your ship is fragile. The cargo's fragile. Uh, and this game is so physics heavy that it is very easy to quickly lose the plot. And as you saw there when I was trying to drop the thing to lose control of what is in your charge very, very quickly. So it requires a lot of patience, a lot of very fine movements. You know, you gotta, you gotta, because you see how this thing's swinging around now? You gotta be very careful. You see, even just dropping it like that, it took four damage. So you gotta really be careful with this and really feather things around. This is a very old school kind of game. And this is not gonna be for people this is not gonna be for everybody. This is not gonna be for people who are short on patience. This are not this is not gonna be for people who want uh, more instant levels of gratification. This is frankly not going to be for people who, to a certain degree, are not video game perfectionists. Uh, because th this is... Yeah. This is a game principally based around score attack. Like, sure, you want to get through the levels. Of course you do. You want to you want to just get to the end and, and finish things off. But you want to do it with the biggest score possible. You want to be able to, you know... Place high on the leaderboards and things like that. So you, this is a game that dem you will be rerunning levels over and over and over again to try to get the best score possible. That's ultimately what you're. you're, you're that, that's ultimately the appeal of these games. That's what really what these are for. And yeah, this game's not very expensive, so. You know, if you do just want to see if you can get through the levels and be done with it, yeah, you could do that, and you can get some good some good fun out of that. But that's really not the point of this, and that's not what these were. These are very much... These types of games are very much designed with an old-school mentality. Uh, you know, one that I, I grew up with, playing games like Space Taxi or Lunar Lander or uh, other things like that. This is really tickling at the nostalgia of those types of people, and I think that's what it was built for. I think I think that's that's who it was. I think that's who it was made for. There we go. And it's a it, it's a niche. There, there's absolutely no doubt about that. This game is designed for a niche. It is appealing to a niche, and um, that's what. You're, you're going to need to be part of that niche to really appreciate this. But I'm really glad a game like this exists. It is... It is a, it is quite enjoyable, if not incredibly infuriating at times. And I think the art style and presentation of this game is very cool and very unique. It's nostalgic in nature, but it also has a modern frame rate, it has modern control response, it has all of the modern quality of life amenities that you would want out of something like this, but it still has that old school vibe to it. It's got the old school music, it's got the old school, you know, the old school color, you know, all of those things. It's a really interesting um, balance that Kucho Games struck here, and I think that's that's quite an achievement, and it's clear that that they were really, dang it, <laughs> it's clear that they were really aiming for that, and they have a fondness for this kind of thing. And I respect any dev that is that is making a game they know is not for everyone, and it is only going to appeal to a niche, and. Is, has chosen to embrace that and really know who their audience is, even if it's a small audience, and making something that's designed to cater to them, specifically. And 
that's definitely what was done here. This game is is definitely not easy, and it's not easy in a way that can be incredibly frustrating. But the benefit of these is that when you get that perfect landing, you know, when you pull off something like that, or you get your cargo just feathered in there just right where it takes no damage, mm, that's super satisfying. And especially if you're able to do it better than I did and do it with a decent amount of fuel, a decent amount of time left, and not losing multiple ships, it's even better. Uh, you will get a sense of, uh, as EA would like to say, pride and accomplishment. But, you know, legit pride and accomplishment. Not pride and accomplishment because you ground something for 5,000 hours. Or maybe you did in this one, I don't know. But it's got that old school arcade home computer fun. Like, I don't really know how to put it. Games like this you didn't really see in arcades. You didn't even see them on consoles that often. It's something that was unique to home computers, but it very much has arcade roots to it. Like it feels like an arcade game, even though it isn't even though it isn't really. It's kind of hard to explain. Home computers in, in many ways had their own spin on a lot of different genres, and which is something I've been showing in a couple of videos lately. And this definitely, um, this definitely is one of those things, and it's it's what I appreciate about it. Am I going to finish this? I don't know. I'm probably going to get to a point with it where I'm just going to be like, I can't take, you know, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> but you never know. And uh, it's definitely a game that will reward persistence and practice and getting good. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And if nothing else, it is very unique in its presentation and I, th I think it's rather striking and and uh, and impressive and I mean anybody who can make modern tracks that sound like they came out of a SID ship definitely you know earns a piece in my book so yeah that's Pirates of Darcelon uh, developed and published by Dr. Cucho Games oh geez wow how did I survive that uh, came out in May of this year and yeah, I'm enjoying it for what it is. It's inexpensive, and, uh, you know, it, it, it it's fun for what it is. If you like this genre from back in the day, or think this kind of challenge is something you'd be into, I would definitely give it a look. And they have another game coming pretty soon as well. They seem to be making kind of a series out of this, which I think is kind of cool in its own way, so... Yeah, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. If you did, please click all the things YouTube style. Please like, subscribe, click the bell. Uh, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think about this game. Hey, I up my high score. Or, uh, you know, if there's other games like this in this genre that you think would uh, would interest you a fair bit, I'd like to know about those because uh, this kind of stuff... I, I love games like... Modern Retro is becoming a big uh, a thing I'm really into. You know, seeing what uh, people are doing making newer games with older mechanics like this. So... I'd love to know about that, but thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I will see you on the next episode of Indie Showcase. You folks have yourselves a good one. Take it easy.